This is a question from the Applied Mathematics section of the TABE practice exam. You will be able to use a calculator on the Applied Mathematics section of the TABE test, and in fact, they'll even provide you with a four-function calculator. But you may not need it on every question. Here's one example of the type of question you'll see when you take the TABE test. Which number should come next in the series? This is a pattern, and so that's what you're looking for, a pattern. It may be that you're multiplying by some certain number, dividing, adding, subtracting. You could be squaring, square rooting. You're just looking for some sort of connection between these numbers. So I always like to start with something simple, like adding. So, to get from 4 to 13, you would simply just add 9. From 13 to 22, again, you would add 9. 13 plus 9 is 22. And again, 22 plus 9 is 31. So the pattern is that we're adding 9 to the previous number. So continue the pattern. 31 plus 9 would be 40. So the number that comes next in the series is 40. You could use a calculator on this question um, by taking 13 and subtracting 4 from it. If you weren't sure what the difference was between 13 and 4, you could simply type in 13 minus 4 in your calculator and it would give you 9. Then you could check to see if that difference was consistent throughout the pattern. 22 minus 13 is again 9 and 31 minus 22 is again 9. And then you would confirm the pattern is that you're adding 9 to the previous term to get the next term. Something to be careful with on these types of problems is sometimes you'll look at just the first two numbers and see, oh, well, it's just 4 plus 9 to get 13. But it may not be that you're adding 9 each time. They could add 9, then 10, then 11, then next you would be adding 12. Or adding 9 could possibly be not even part of the pattern at all. So that's why it's important for you to check all the way through the numbers you're given to make sure that you have the pattern right. So there you have an example problem from the TABE applied mathematics portion of the TABE exam. This is a question from the Applied Mathematics section of the TABE test. On the Applied Mathematics section of the TABE exam, you will be allowed to use a four-function calculator. But you may not need it for every problem. Let's look at this example. What number is one-half the average of three, four, and five? So first you need to know what an average is. An average is well, I'll just tell you how to find it. Um, well, an average is the middle of the numbers. So to find the middle of your numbers, you have to take your numbers, add them together, and then divide by the number of numbers you have. That's how you find an average. So we add 3 plus 4, which is 7, plus 5, 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. That's the average, but don't stop there. Refer back to your question. What number is one-half the average? So this is our average. We need to take half of that. So half of four is two. So our answer here is two. Make sure you're reading carefully when you answer these questions on the TABE test, because some of them are, have multiple parts to them. And you may get bogged down on finding one part and then forget completely about the second part. So be careful when taking your tape test. This is a question from the Applied Mathematics section of the TABE practice test. On the Applied Mathematics section of the TABE exam, you will be allowed to use a four-function calculator. So keep that in mind as we work this problem. The mean of three numbers is 11. Two of the numbers are 8 and 13. What is the third number? So first we have to know what the word mean means. The mean is simply the average. 
To find an average, you add all of your numbers together and divide them by the number of numbers you have. So if we were going to add all of our numbers together, we'd be adding 8, 13, and x for the third number because that's the one we don't know. 8 plus 13 plus x. Then we would divide that by the number of numbers, which is 3, to yield our average, which we were given, was 11. Now we need to solve this equation. The first thing you want to do is simplify it by combining the 8 and the 13. 8 plus 13 is 21, plus x divided by 3 is equal to 11. From here, there are a couple of different routes you can take. But the easiest one, I think, is to get rid of this dividing by 3 by doing the opposite and multiplying both sides of your equation by 3. So you see on the left side, our 3's cross cancel. So we have 21 plus x equals 33. Then to solve for x, undo adding 21 to x by subtracting 21 from both sides. 21 minus 21 is 0, so we're left with x is equal to 12. So your answer is 12. So there's an example of the type of question you'll encounter when taking the TABE test. Good luck. This is a question from the applied mathematics section of a TABE practice test. On the TABE exam, you will be allowed to use a four-function calculator only on the applied mathematics section. Let's look at this problem. A circle has an area equal to 36 pi. What is its diameter? First, we need to start with the formula for area of a circle, which is area equals pi times the radius squared. What we know is that the area is 36 pi, so we replace area with 36 pi. We don't know the radius, but we can solve for the radius. First, we have to undo multiplying radius by pi by dividing both sides by pi. Anything divided by itself is 1, even pi, because pi really is just a number. So pi divided by pi is 1 times 36 is 36, and again pi divided by pi is 1, and 1 times radius squared is radius squared. Then we solve for the radius by undoing squaring the radius which means square rooting both sides. The square root of 36 is either a positive 6 or a negative 6. But since a radius, which is a length in a circle, can't be negative, it's positive 6. That's the radius. What we were asked to find is the diameter. The diameter of a circle is the distance all the way across the circle through the center. Let's look at a picture. This would be your radius, 6. The diameter is simply twice as long. So the diameter is twice the radius, since it goes all the way across your circle. This would also be 6. So the diameter is 2 times the radius, which is 6, which means the diameter is 12. So there's the type of problem you'll encounter when taking the TABE test. Good luck! The TABE exam has two math sections. This is a question from the Applied Mathematics section of a TABE practice test. The ratio of left-handed to right-handed ball players on the girls' softball team is 2 to 3. If there are 12 left-handed players on the team, how many girls are on the roster in all. So let's start with this ratio left-handed to right-handed. Then we are given the ratio in numbers 2 to 3. So that means there are two left-handed players for every three right-handed players. Then we are told that there are 12 left-handed players on the team. 
So we can write a proportion by putting our 12 left-handed players in the top position of our second ratio. So what we don't know is how many right-handed players there are. We can simply put an x there. And then we can use cross-multiplication to solve to find the number of right-handed players. So 2 times x is 2x, and 3 times 12 is 36. Then we divide both sides by 2, and x is 18. That means there are 18 right-handed players. But that's not what we were asked. We weren't asked how many girls were right-handed. We were asked how many girls are on the roster in all. That means we need to add our total number of left-handed players and right-handed players together. 12 plus 18. 8 plus 2 is 10, carry the 1, and that's 3. That means there are a total of 30 players on the team. So there's an example of a question that you might encounter when you take the TABE test. Good luck!